Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Have you ever wanted to make your own traffic cone? Well, of course not. Neither have I. That's ridiculous. However, that shape, called a frustum, is extremely useful and something you can make yourself. It's got loads of applications. I've used it for transitions for rocket bodies. I've used it to make some air ducting. I've used it to make uh, dust collectors. Well, here's a list over here of some different things. Horns for your sirens. Uh, cones, if you do want to make those, for some other thing. Lampshades, of course, are that. Nozzles, very, very useful. Speaker cones, sirens, and of course funnels are those shapes. Here's a little uh, diagram of a dust collector that Alex wants to make for his own use. But the great thing about the frustum shape, or cone shape, is that it can be flat wrapped. You can trace out this shape on anything you, I mean, so paper, cardboard, sheet metal, what have you, and then roll it up and stick it together with welds, rivets, glue, whatever. And this is super useful, and you can do it yourself. And I'm going to show you how, in this video, that you can actually do that. So let's say, for example, that you want to make a shape like this. Your large diameter, we're going to call D2, of 2 inches, or 2 units. We'll use inches in this case, because I'm going to show you at the end how this actually works. We'll draw it out on paper and roll it up, and you'll see that it works. D1 is 1. We're going to call this length of 3. And then there's this H here, hypotenuse. So given these three inputs, what are the outputs to be able to trace this? Well, you're going to need to know, when, when you unwrap this, say you slit this down one side and you unwrap it, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have an R2, which corresponds to D2. So you have R2, D2. Puns are always intended. An R1, and then you're going to have... If you extend these out here down to some point, you're going to have a theta, an angle. So you're going to have these three outputs. You're going to have a theta, an R1, and an R2, which correspond to your three inputs. And so I'm going to show you how to take these inputs and lay this out so that you can make this flat pattern. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to look at this in half. So we're just going to take half of this for now. I'm going to show you one way that we can do this. We need to find this H. Well, there's a couple ways to do that. You can use trig, you can use geometry, and so let's, let's do this. In order to find this H, we need to know, right, we, let's just use Pythagorean Theorem. That's familiar to most people, and it's easier than using uh, inverse tangents and things like that, which I'm kind of partial to, but let's do it this way. So, from our example here, d2 over 2, we know this is 1, right? This, is, this side is 1. 1 half of d1 is, well, it's just a half, so we'll just erase that. And this is 3. If we draw this parallel line here, then we know this, of course, this height is 0. This segment here is a half. Like, man, that's a terrible 2. So that's a half. This is a half. And so we know the slope of this line, then, don't we? We're going to need that in a second. But Pythagorean theorem says that we can use a squared plus b squared is c squared. So h is the square root of 3 squared plus 1 half squared. So h is 3.04. And you'll see why we need that here in just a second. So that's one way you could have done it. Of course, you could have found this angle here by using the uh, arc tangent of 1 half over 3. You get uh, 9 and some change, and then you could have done it that way. But, nah. <clears throat> so... Knowing this now, 3.04, what we need to figure out, though, is our theta. We need to know where this point is, because these two, R2 and R1, are concentric circles. And so we need to find where that is. Well, this, this is not too hard to do. If we kind of just look at it, you don't have to use trig, even though uh, it's totally doable. If we were to extend this out, right, extend our hypotenuse out, and extend this side out to this, where is this point here? Because what we need to do is find the length of our total h, all the way from where these meet to all the way up here, because that's going to give us our r2. Well, this doesn't take a lot. Like I said, if you just look at this for a half a second, you'll see exactly how to figure this out. So what's the slope of our line here? That's all we're really figuring out. Well, we went forward three. We went down a half. We need to, we're here now. We need to lose another half. Well, so we need to go forward another three. So that means this point out here would be L6. If we were going to make this a full cone, it would be 6 high, 
but we're only using half of that, so it's three. That means our total length here, uh, since this is, the, this is at the halfway point, is just going to be double this of 6.08. Oh, we'll draw an arrow because it doesn't equal. 3.04 does not equal 6.08. So there's one of our outputs, R2. I'll write this over here, 6.08. Well, that's really easy then to get R1 because in our special case here, it just happened to be half of that. So this is 3.04. Now, of course, if this didn't work out quite the same, all you would do, let's say that this L was only 2, right? If L was 2, well, then you would use this, this length here would just be 2 thirds of our total instead of um, the entire thing. So R1 instead would be 4.06 uh, something. So you need to find R2 first by finding the slope of this line and finding out where it vanishes. That gets you your R2. Your R1 then is simply a percentage of wherever this, wherever your frustum is going to stop. And in this case it was 50%, so it was nice half, 3.04. But now we need to find the angle that this thing occupies because the angle of this uh, depends, it totally, depending on the angle of that, the shape of your cone is going to completely change. And so, here's kind of where the trick comes in. It took me a bit to conceptualize how this is going to work, but I figured it out. Let me show you. It's really not that, not that hard. Imagine this. If you've got, let's put that back here. This diameter has a circumference, doesn't it? Circumference is pi d. So, our circumference here, circumference of our base, is pi d, which in our case uh, is pi is 3 point, uh, 6.28, 6.28 for this end. This end here, pi d, is 3.14, because d is 1. Okay, so how does this 6.28 correspond to this over here? Well, let's think of it this way. If this weren't going to wrap, and this was a full circle all the way around, right, what what would its circumference be? Well, it's 2 pi r. We know our r of 6.08. We would multiply that by 2, get 12.16 times pi. That would give us all the way around, okay? Is 2 times this times pi, which is 38.22. Uh, two, two? 38.22. So, what percentage of 38.22 is 6.08. That's how far around that we would go, but we're only going a little bit. Uh, so we'll take 6.08 divided by uh, 38.22. Um, 59.18 degrees is our theta, 59.18. So there's our output there. There's that, and there's that. Does that make sense? I hope so. Remember what we did. We found, first off, we found where this point would intersect if it was a full cone. We did that by using Pythagorean's theorem and the slope of this line for to give us 6.08. That gives us, from our start point here, our R2. We then found out what our R1 was going to be. In our case, it was exactly half, just because of the geometry of this particular shape. R1 was exactly half at 3.04. To find the theta then, we first found, we found the base circumference of our D2. Pi D, to give us 6.28, is the circumference of this. When you cut this and unwrap it, it becomes an arc length. So we back up here, and we find what the entire arc would be if this were just a flat donut, because if, if you took 2 pi r, or this whole thing, it wouldn't wrap, it would lay flat. Well, as soon as you use less than a full circle and try to connect those ends, it's going to start to stand up and become the uh, frustum like we're trying to do. And so, we then took that circumference as a percentage of our total theoretical circle that would be occupied if this were a full circle, and we get uh, 59.18 degrees because you know, 360 is a full circle, so whatever percentage of 360 it gave us that. And so these are the three outputs for those three inputs. Now, 
Well, another thing, of course, when you lay this out, unless you're going to somehow butt weld it together, you need to have a tab on one end. And this is totally at your discretion, how big you want it to be, but something like this. A quarter inch is good for uh, paper and things. If you're going to use rivets, I mean, you need to allow, you know, at least double the width of the rivet. But that's how you do this. It's really not all that tough, and it's something that's, it's really fun and satisfying to lay this out. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. I'm just going to use CAD to sketch this shape. We'll cut it out, wrap it up, and see what happens. Well, you can see it worked perfectly. This is something you can definitely do yourself. It's an awful lot of fun to cut out these shapes, stick them together, and play around with them. It's got all these uses that I've thought of. There's probably a lot more that I haven't thought of. When you think of something, leave it a comment down there and let me know some other uses for this, because these are really fun to make. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.